In the first part of this video, you witnessed amazing stories related to the discovery of giant skeletons. We looked at the case from 1819 when soldiers in California discovered a sarcophagus with a giant skeleton along with a number of other artifacts. This discovery led to the exploration of a series of puzzling similar stories. We have also seen how these stories are reflected in Native American myths and legends. In addition, we touched on the topic of archaeological finds and the mystery surrounding giant skeletons in the United States, discussing the various theories and assumptions about their origins and veracity. Finally, we delved into the worlds of Native American legends, examining the story of the Sitika, also known as the Lovelock Cave Giants. Now it's time to continue our story by delving deeper into why the Smithsonian Institution has been buying up almost all of the giant skeletons that have been discovered. We'll find out more about the controversies and theories that divide scientists and enthusiasts on the subject, and many more interesting facts that will do our best to unravel the long-kept secret of giant skeletons. More Giants Cases of giant skeletons being unearthed weren't only limited to mounds and other places sacred to the Native Americans. In 1933, a boy in a quiet Missouri town was only looking for arrowheads when he instead found a whole skeleton of an eight-feet giant. The skeleton was taken to Dr. R.C. Parker's office to be examined, before being shipped to the Smithsonian Institution. In San Diego, 1895, an eight-foot, four-inch tall skeleton of what was believed to have belonged to a Native American man. The Smithsonian bought it for $500 and exhibited it for 13 years until it was re-examined and declared to be made from a gelatin. Why they bought it, or why it took that long to be re-examined, is anybody's guess. Are any of these real? Now, if there are these many accounts of giant skeletons found in the United States alone, why is it that the mainstream science still denies the existence of giants? And more importantly, where are these skeletons now, and what happened to them? As with any accounts that are attempting to prove the existence of anything that are classified fringe science, many of these reports were declared to be hoax, exaggerations, or misidentification by scientists. To be fair, many of these have been proven to be deliberate hoax or pranks, including the Cardiff Giant, which was made of an angry atheist to prove how people could be easily fooled. Meanwhile, a lot of these articles that feature giant skeletons don't have a solid proof to back it up, except for skeletal remains that have been stashed away in the Smithsonian and the word of a few witnesses. With no actual bones in display to prove it, it will be hard for proponents of giant race existence to convince others. There is also the fact that these giant skeletons, though they may indeed be larger than normal humans, could be affected by a very real condition that causes them to grow very tall called gigantism or acromegaly. These two conditions are caused by excess growth hormone, with the former affecting children and the latter adults. Children who are affected by this condition can grow abnormally tall. Most people who develop this condition die young. Robert Woodlow, the tallest man ever recorded and verified, stood 8 feet and 11 inches or 2.72 meters tall. And in the case of Robert, he died at a mere age of 22. With this in mind, is it possible that those giant skeletons were only victims of this rare condition? Then there's also the mathematics side of things. According to the square cube law, as an object increases in size, its volume increases much faster than its surface area. Meaning, if a giant exists, it would collapse under its own weight since their bones cannot support the whole volume of their body. It's this very principle that people with gigantism, like Robert Woodlow, have to wear leg braces and use a cane in order to stand. But what about dinosaurs? Or the Statue of Liberty? Why in the world are they standing? Are they exempt to this rule? No. 
Like everything that exists in the 3D world, dinosaurs and the Statue of Liberty are subject to the square cube law. No exceptions. However, why they are able to stand straight without crumbling down is because of their very composition. According to theories, the reason dinosaurs could break the square cube law was that the same species have hollow bones to make their skeletons less dense and therefore lighter. While others have large lower limbs that support their massive weight, Meanwhile, man-made constructs like machinery, giant statues, and tall buildings have to depend on the design and materials used to ensure that it won't go beyond its limit. So there you go. Unless the giants have a different body composition and structure than humans, then the square cube law very much dismisses their existence. In most cases, anyway. Giants over 13 feet or 4 meters tall, sure, below that, however, there might still be a glimmer of hope. Remember that most of the giants we talked about have measured around 7 to 12 feet tall only. The square cube law doesn't necessarily make that existence and an outright impossibility, especially that there are well-documented humans in the recent history whose height was within this range. Although if they had existed, it's also likely that they ran into all sorts of health problems. Now let's go back to the giants in America. So, is that all there is? Just a bunch of tall tales? No pun intended. Some, but not all, because apparently there are a still few strange elements to these stories, starting with the very institute that is supposed to safeguard these bits and pieces that could hold a clue to our distant past. The Smithsonian Institution was, as you know by now, where most of the skeleton findings end up. Weirdly enough, it's either they were labeled as hoax or lay there forgotten. Another strange thing was how none of these newspapers, eyewitnesses, and discoveries seem to have followed up on the story. New York Times published two giant skeleton articles, but that was it. The Smithsonian Institution has played an active role since the 1800s in receiving the skeleton of a purported giants. However, they've also continuously dismissed each one as nothing more than incorrect or falsified. Led by Alice Herdlichka and then curator of the anthropology at the Smithsonian Institution in 1934, these claims of giant skeletons have been rejected time and again. Herdlichka was admit and rejecting the existence of giants, blaming people for being so easily fooled either by incorrect knowledge or biased religious belief. That's understandable. But Urjlitska has a bit of spotty record, especially when it comes to his views on the original settlers of North America. Urjlitska was a staunch advocate of the opinion that America was uninhabited until 3,000 years ago, an outdated notion as it's now common knowledge that humans have lived in the continent for at least 10,000 years. Not to mention, he was involved with the American Eugenics Society, which was a pretty shady organization. Putting his quiet controversial career aside, Herdlechka was only one of the many academics who would instantly dismiss anything that supports alternative ideas of history. Sadly, this is all too real for most fringe theories out there. The continental drift, the ancient city of Troy, and the global flood were in this category not too long ago. A hundred years ago, people would scoff at the idea of continents moving away from their place. The ancient city of Troy was but a mere legend until its discovery in 1871. And now, more and more evidence that a global flood once happened thousands of years ago. There isn't a conclusive proof yet but the case for that is getting stronger. While it's hard to say that the giant theory of America will also achieve the same breakthrough in the future, especially that we actually don't have conclusive evidence for the existence of a giant race. As if on cue, the mysterious artifacts that amaze specialists keep appearing. As early as the second century, in the first century of the 20th century, in the first century AD, the Greek geographer Pausanias, author of the first travel guidebooks, testified that a well-preserved human skeleton 
was discovered at the bottom of the river in Skront in Syria, which was five and a half meters or 18 feet tall. Spanish conquistadors in one of the Maya temples discovered a human skeleton so stunning in its dimensions that it was sent to the Pope on the orders of Cortes. In the 1970s, a human footprint 31 inches, 80 centimeters long was discovered in Tanzania. In recent times, however, the view has gradually gained ground that the source of the giant legends is the eternal human tendency to exaggeration. Most religions agree that in ancient times, humans lived in the Golden Age. They were not only superior and courageous, but also distinguished by excellent health and longevity. Adam and the early patriarchs lived to an incredible age. Scripture does not mention the height of these men, but in the 18th century, biblical scholars estimated that Adam's height reached 37 meters, 121 feet, and Noah was just over 30, 98 feet. The reason is that as the Golden Age passed, the growth of humans gradually began to decline. Historians and scholars of the past have held to more modest measurements. Before the natural cataclysm, according to them, a civilization of people about 4 meters, 13 feet tall, lived on our planet. Back then, the air temperature was higher and the oxygen content of the atmosphere higher. The water was supersaturated with calcium, which favored bone growth. Proponents of this concept argue that our ancestors named enemies giants because, after all, if the enemy is a giant, defeating it is more valuable. As for the cruelty of giants, which is often mentioned in the stories, they're also associated with human psychology. Why endow the enemy with beauty and intelligence? Yet there are real findings that sow the seed of great doubt. In 1941, while conducting excavations on the island of Java, the German paleontologist von Kinningswald found several teeth in the ground, and then the entire jaw of an ancient primate, a time the size of a modern gorilla. And that's how Megantherus Palajavinkas, the giant man of ancient Java, was revealed to the world. In the years that followed, the remains of an even larger creature was discovered in southern China. South Africa and Java. It was named Gigantopithecus. Von Kingswald considered the Gigantopithecus to be a relative recent ape, and his colleague Whitingreich boldly suggests that the Homo sapiens evolved from Gigantopithecus, passing developmentally through the stages of Meganthrope and Pithecanthrope, like each previous species is a larger than the next. English paleontologists in the Mongolian city of Yuluk have discovered the remains of a giant humanoid creature in a 45 million year old rock. The skull looks like that of a great ape, but each anthropological sign suggests that the creature was intelligent and could speak. The skeleton is also close to human, except for the size. About 15 meters, 49 feet, American paleontologist however, remain skeptical of the find. However, many scientists are inclined to see in the Gigantopithecus a distant relative of a man who lived in the middle and early Pleistocene epochs. For many of us, these tales of giants that once existed in the world is just another story, another tale to entertain ourselves. But to others, it is their history. Whether we choose to believe it or not, the important thing is, we dare to be found answers on our own and let others do the same. After all, curiosity is the door to which big discoveries and monumental breakthroughs are found. Keep the adventure going. Navigate to our playlists. Curious for more? Explore the following episode. Don't stop now. Watch the next video in the series.